Hello explorers and welcome to another video. Today we're going to talk a little bit about Ceph and an error that I got in Ceph regarding global ID reuse. And we are going to talk about how we're gonna fix that, how you're gonna know what is the problem and also talk a little bit about building the Windows Ceph client. So in this video, we will talk about this global ID reuse issue. And it was actually something that were in the change log. I read about it and there were long notice about it. And it's not something that you really think about, but you get an error message and you want to have no errors in your cluster to make sure that you have a safe and good environment and that it works well. So I have looked into this, I asked in forums, I sent to the email list and they were very helpful and so on. So there is a lot of resources out there if you want help with the Ceph cluster, but I didn't find out how to do this myself. So in this case, it's something that ensuring that reconnecting and new clients are presenting an existing ticket when reclaiming the global ID value, an attacker uh, that was able to uh, authenticate, could claim a global ID in use by a different client and potentially disrupt, disrupt uh, other cluster services. So you could take over an ID and perhaps bring another client down. I guess that you can take over an ID and get those permissions or something like that, but it's a very bad practice to have IDs that could be reused by another client and be um, miscommunicated and so on. So they wanted to fix this and it's really good that they have done that, but it gives you an error if you don't have it fully supported in your cluster. So if we look further down here, uh, fixed versions here is specific 16.2.1 and later. And that's my cluster, I'm running Pacific. At the moment I'm running 16.2.5. Uh, and I started with 16.2.4, I believe. Uh, so I had that in my local cluster. At work, we are running a late, uh, earlier version of uh, Octopus. I think we are running 15.2.8. So I will upgrade that uh, later, uh, next week. So it's good to actually make sure that you have this upgraded and ready. And if you have your cluster upgraded, but you don't have your clients upgraded, you are in a state where you can't run this feature yet and you will get errors. So I upgraded my cluster and it gave me a lot of errors. You have clients that can't connect with this feature and you can't turn on the feature that requires the client to have this feature. Um, so if we go further down here, we have something that could mute this so you can say that in insecure global id reclaim uh, accept that for a week if you like um, and you can also go in and run this last command here allow insecure global id reclaim to false but if you do that and have clients that don't support it they will be kicked out they can't connect anymore and in my case, I had the error both that the clients had a lower version and that I hadn't turned this feature on. So what I did was trying to figure out what was the problem and I didn't figure it out. But a good thing here in these recommendations is the command over here, Ceph health detail. If you run that command, it will not only show you that you have an error, it will also tell you which clients have not been upgraded to the right version and what version they are running. And when I looked into that, I figured out that one of my Linux versions ran with the kernel module that was installed in the Linux environment. So that was 14 something and very old one came with Buster and I didn't want that one. I wanted to add the Ceph repository so I could get the latest one. So that was very easy. I just did a pure install of that on that machine and gave it up to uh, the Ceph cluster. So it actually had version 
16 um, to 5 and then I didn't have that problem anymore. So uh, the other client was the Windows client and the Windows client told me that it was running version 15.00, so 15.0.0 and that is the version you get if you download the installer online which I did, I thought that was the pure correct way to install this but 15.0.0 is some kind of beta version and it's not for production use it's not really ready in that um, version and I know that the client is alpha or beta already so that could be a good indication that that is not a good thing to run so what I wanted to do was to fix this issue with my Windows client and after a long while while looking around on the internet and trying to figure out where is the code for that Windows client that they have built I could only find the installer but after a long while I figured out that the repository of the Ceph um, main repository had the Windows functionality in it so if we go over to this file here in the Ceph repository it's actually talking about how to build the Windows client from the source code and it says that you can run it in MinGiv with a GCC of 8 and later and using Windows compiler you should be able to run it in Windows subsystem for Linux, MSYS2 or Sigwin and um, but those aren't tested yet they are not ready but they are currently supporting Ubuntu 20.04 and uh, OpenSUSE uh, uh, Tumbleweed. So what I thought first was I installed MinSys2 and tried to get that to work. Didn't get that to work. I tried Sigwin. I didn't that get that to work either. It was a lot of packages that were missing. It was hard time to get the right uh, C uh, make that could uh, build it and so on so I, I gave up that after about a day of testing so that is not really ready at the moment and uh, then I thought okay Ubuntu it builds on Debian so perhaps I can do this in Debian uh, I tried it in just one of my install of Debian and the problems I had that there were that the Debian had a very old version of CMake so I needed to upgrade that that went fine but when I had done that I actually had a two new version of GCC so some of the experimental features for the uh, operating system uh, or the uh, file system was not there because those were real versions they were not experimental anymore so I couldn't really get that to work so this Ubuntu 2004 is older and therefore supported and ready just to use. So I installed one of those. Then I tried to uh, follow this guide and it says that you just need to run Win32 build sh with skip tests and you will build uh, the DLLs and so on. That didn't work for me either. And that's because this repository requires a lot of stuff you really need to look into how to actually build Ceph first so I went over to the uh, readme that is the first readme that you get when you install it and if you want to check out the source code you need first off to clone the source code you need to uh, update all the sub modules to so get all that data and you also need to install all the dependencies and when you have done that then you can run this uh, build script down here and it will create the windows binaries for you so you will get a zip file with a lot of um, dlls and also uh, some exe files and so if we switch over here to uh, so if we look here in my file explorer in my ceph uh, in program C program files Ceph bin you will see that uh, there is all of these DLLs that I uh, installed here so those are present and if you install all of this 
and then restart the service because there is a service installed in Windows when you use the installer it will give you an, um, a Windows service and when you install that it will install that service with RBD uh, dash uh, WNBD uh, dot exe but that actually requires the lib uh, WNDBD uh, dot DLL and that was not present in the built package and if I restarted the service it actually asked me for that file I do, did the most pragmatic solution to that I just took the old uh, install uh, directory and copied in that library and then restarted the service again and got it to work so now I have a working version of um, the Ceph Windows client and if I run it in a command prompt it will tell me that I'm currently on 16.2.5 which is the current version so I actually when I checked out the uh, Git repository, I also checked out the tag of 16.2.5, which um, will ensure that I actually get a version that is built against what I'm actually using in my cluster at the moment. Then I have a Windows client that has this new functionality with reclaiming IDs and the issues I saw in the GUI that I had an error disappeared it said that all clients are upgraded now so now you can take this feature and run the last command in the sequence that we had down here to configure this global ID reclaim to false which means that no unupgraded clients may uh, log into this network and make the network more insecure because it can reclaim these global IDs. So this was what I wanted to cover today. I hope that you found this interesting. I hope that you learned something today. If you are planning to upgrade your Ceph cluster, it's good to keep in mind that all clients needs to be upgraded as well. And as we are doing it uh, really soon, we have made a plan for how to do this and how to get all the clients up and running in a good manner. So it will take a little bit more effort, but it's really important that you get this security update in your Ceph cluster. If you like this video, give it a like, share it with your friends and colleagues. If you haven't subscribed yet, please do that. And if you have any comments or suggestions, leave them down in the comment section down below. And I really hope to see you in the next video.